SOLIDWORKS 2015, SOLIDWORKS actually released, and maybe a lot of people don't know this, uh, the ability to print directly from 3D. So you could hit, um, say, SOLIDWORKS, print to 3D, and you could actually send your file directly to the 3D printer, just like you're printing a Word document. All right. Now think of that, because typically the way that had to be done before was you would create an STL file, um, export, you know, send that uh, to a machine that was mounted with a, with a printer on it or send it directly to the printer, um, have somebody launch the routine to actually do the printing. So it, it really was kind of cumbersome, right? Is there was this broken, there was a, a break in the chain. So what we want to do was to be able to say, we're going to be able to just print directly from SOLIDWORKS to the printer. So we've been uh, uh, fortunate enough to have been working on the uh, 3MF format, which is the um, uh, Microsoft Windows driver for 3D printing. Um, and so we've been working with them and, and that printer has been uh, getting, you know, adding more capabilities on as we went. So in the future, as, as 3D printing gets um, more prevalent, uh, more desktop-like, um, we'll be right there making sure that we stay on target with that. Now, for 2016 SOLIDWORKS, it's interesting because one of the things that we got for feedback on 3D printing, customers want to know what will my part look like after it's 3D printed. So we actually have created a way that, that when you 3D print a part, we actually feed back, uh, basically using textures, what that part will actually look like when it's 3D printed. You know, what, what the ridges will look like and everything like that. So um, we're giving more feedback as to what's happening in 3D printing. Also, we're showing you where the supports have to happen. So if you 3D print a part, you have to worry about if it's a long part and it's on kind of a can cantilever, you have to worry about supporting that material. So we give feedback where, where you have to support your part. And what that allows you to do is maybe change the design of your part so you don't have to support it, or maybe even reorient the part in the printer, you know, the way you're going to print it, so you can reduce the amount of uh, supports that you have to make. So we're really trying to integrate. We're working with a lot of the 3D printer companies and really trying to understand better um, what our customers want when it comes to 3D printing, and we've been putting those enhancements in. Really, the main use of 3D printing is still prototyping right now. But we see a kind of a spike in the use of 3D printing for production, especially in metal printing. So 3D centered metal printing. Um, people are starting to use that uh, more in a one-off production environment, like you'd say a race car or maybe some kind of a one-off aerospace application, something like that. Um, and the other big use of 3D printing is tooling. So fixtures, uh, you know, to, to hold parts so you can either measure them or maybe even assemble them or even machine them. Um, we're even seeing now um, plastic molds, uh, inje um, rapid prototype molds that are made in a plastic that you can actually shoot injected molded parts into. So the range of how 3D printing is being used out there is starting to change. It's going from just prototyping to more one-off production and also tooling. So we're seeing this move that way.